Hey, it's Harker from Play. Today, we're going to learn how to customize a prefab by changing the interaction nodes inside the prefab and adjusting the prefab variables. And we're going to use that to create this interaction, where I can change the number of columns in this grid by selecting different segments in the segmented control. So let's get into it. On my page, which I've now just opened on my iOS device, this project has no interaction, so we can add them. We're going to select this parent grid, which is just a vertical stack that has a bunch of different cards inside it. And this is going to become our grid. So we're going to go into interaction mode and add a grid prefab onto this parent grid stack. And you can see by default in our iOS device, now this stack has three columns. And we can change the number of columns by adjusting the column property, the prefab control in our prefab. So I can make this instead like seven. You can see by default, it's going to do that. Now let's open the prefab, let's unlock it to see what's under the hood here. Our home prefab is being triggered by an on load event, which means it's going to fire as soon as the user opens the page or refreshes the page or navigates to the page. But what if we instead wanted to fire this interaction when something else happens? We can do this using a custom event. So I'm going to add onto our grid prefab node, I'm going to add a custom event. And the event type is going to be grid, which is something I've already created in my events panel here. Now I'm going to take all of these interaction nodes that are currently on the on load event, and I'm just going to drag them onto the custom event. And we can go ahead and delete this on load event. So you can see now by default, nothing happens on our iOS device because we have not fired this interaction yet. So we're going to fire it by using the segmented control. So now I'm going to go ahead and select that and we're going to add interactions on here. So I'm going to add a segmented control event trigger. And we're going to change the event to now fire only when the second segment index two is selected. So in this case, it's the one that says three. I want to add on here two things. First, a set event action. And the event we're going to trigger is grid. So now when the user taps on the second segment right here, it's going to trigger that grid prefab. But we also want to change the number of columns based on the segment we have selected. So we're also going to add a set variable action onto our segmented control event. Now in set variable actions, you can just set the value of a predefined variable. But you can also use an expression to target a specific property. So in this case, we want to target the parent grid, which is that full stack. And in the parent grid, we want to target this grid trigger, which is the prefab. Now, when I type a period after this grid prefab, it's going to give me a list of all of the prefab variables. So in this case, we want to target columns. We want to set the value of this to three. Now, if I were to do this interaction right now, you can see I tap three, it's still going to set the columns to seven. That's because every interaction in play starts with a top action and then goes through the other action. So we want this set variable action to fire before the set event. So I'm going to take this and drag it above it. And now when I tap three, now it's going to have three columns. Now we also want to change the number of columns when I tap on these other ones. So we're going to take this segmented controller event and we're just going to duplicate it. And now we can target each of the other indexes. So for this first one, we're going to do index one. We can leave everything the same. We're just going to change the value of this parent grid columns variable from the prefab. And for this first one, we'll do one because that's what it says in the segment here. And then I'm going to take this and duplicate it one more time. This time target index three. And this time we're going to set the number of columns to be six. So now on my iOS device, I can do one, three, six, and everything is working. In this case, everything's snapping to that number of columns. What if we wanted to animate there? Well, we can go back onto our parent grid prefab and we can add an animate node. So I'm going to add that to my event trigger, just animate block. And now I can take all of these actions and I can move them onto that animate block. So they're still going to be fired when the event fires, but they're all going to animate at the same time because they're now all attached to this block. So now we can change this, maybe add a little spring, reduce it. And now on my iOS device, when I tap three, it animates to have three columns. Now it'll animate to have six columns, three, one. And we were able to do all of that, taking the grid prefab that the play team has created for you and just adding in these different nodes and adding in other interactions that trigger this prefab and change the prefab variables. 
I hope you found this video interesting. I'm excited to see what you do with this. Thanks.